Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to try to find solutions to a few scientific mysteries. One of them is in regards to black holes and one of them is in regards to missing matter in the universe. Let's talk about this and welcome to What Math. So when it comes to cosmology and the study of the universe, there are definitely no shortage of different mysteries that we still can't really solve. But two mysteries that kind of fascinated me for the longest time were how is it that some black holes end up being so gigantic? And I'm not really talking about these so-called supermassive black holes like the one in the middle of our own galaxy. I'm talking about these monsters, the ultra-massive black holes that are billions of masses of our own sun. Basically several thousand times more than the one in the middle of our own galaxy. These black holes are really difficult to explain and their existence is a bit of a mystery. On the other hand, we also have this other mystery known as the missing matter mystery. Now, I'm not really talking about dark matter or anything to do with dark energy. There's actually what's known as missing baryonic problem, about which you can read more on Wikipedia, which refers to the idea that if you were to look around our galaxy and if you were to look around the universe and try to kind of combine all of this with theoretical predictions of how much matter there should be after the Big Bang, it doesn't seem to add up to what we're seeing. In other words, there should be approximately 30% more stuff out there than we're observing. And for the longest time, scientists couldn't really figure out why. Now, some papers suggested that maybe it's actually just hiding in between galaxies in the so-called um, filaments. I've talked about the galactic filaments in many other videos, so you can check them out on the channel. They should be popping up somewhere near the end of the video. But these filaments can still maybe not explain all of the matter. Some of it is still kind of missing. So in other words, we have these two mysteries, missing matter and tremendously large black holes. And maybe it's somehow related. But it still doesn't really explain everything. And so to try to explain all of this, what modern scientists do is, instead of looking at nearby galaxies, they actually try to point their telescopes at really, really, really distant places in the universe that I'm going to try to simulate right here by basically looking at the beginning of the universe or as close to it as possible. And essentially they're trying to look at the first billion years after the Big Bang. And by looking at those distant regions very, very, very long time ago, they can try to discover what may have happened. Now, some of the recent studies started to bring in some really interesting ideas and interesting discoveries. And the very recent paper that came out only a few days ago from when I'm making this video discovered that by using the so-called Requiem survey, they were able to look at some of the earliest galaxies or some of the earliest so-called quasars, really, really bright active galaxies in the beginning of the universe. And they were able to find some really unusual observations that were never really visible to us. And this is simply because our instruments have improved so much. So what have they found? Well, by looking at these 31 quasars that you see in this table here, and by identifying everything that's going on inside of them, and all of these were only about 800 to 900 million years old, so basically about 12.5 to maybe 13 billion years ago, they've discovered that 12 of these quasars were surrounded by a huge amount of gas, and all of this was very dense hydrogen gas extending up to about 100,000 light years from the center of every galaxy, with about billions of masses of the sun in terms of gas. In other words, it had a lot of matter present in these galaxies, around the galaxy, and all of this was kind of feeding the galaxy or feeding the black hole in the middle of the galaxy, allowing these black holes to relatively quickly grow in mass. And this actually coincides with another very recent study, the study right here from Harvard University that discovered that by using various computer simulations and more specifically a supercomputer, they were able to create really large massive black holes of about 250,000 masses of the sun in the middle of really early galaxies if enough mass was present. So in other words, uh, by using the computer simulations and by combining them uh, with observations from the VLT, this beautiful telescope you see on the screen, both of these papers may have resolved the issue with ultra-massive black holes. So some of these galaxies may have had so much mass in them 
present basically in the early um, periods of the universe that then got absorbed into the black holes very very quickly with a lot of that mass then probably being thrown out and creating the filaments that we detected with many other studies. And this also coincides with the recent study I talked about, the Mambo 9 galaxy, that also seems to possess a lot of mass and a lot of activity, and it's much larger, much more massive than any other early galaxy we've discovered so far. And although this might not resolve all of the missing matter, and might not entirely solve the missing baryonic problem completely, it does solve some of it. We might be able to explain that some of this matter did end up in these ultramassive black holes, and some of it got ejected by these black holes to create the galactic filament afterwards. So by looking at those uh, quasars and discovering that a third of them was actually very active and very massive in the beginning, and actually did have a lot of matter we didn't know about before, we can maybe finally explain how ultramassive black holes like M87 and of course the so-called galactic filament can form and be created from the early universe. Now here's actually an image of one of these quasars or one of these really early galaxies. This is what it looks like. And you can see that this huge cloud right here, that's essentially all of this gas that's present in the galaxy. And this is like 100,000 light years across. This is a really, really large distance. And right there in the middle you see the quasar itself being a very active and um, very bright point that produces a lot of energy. And if you take a look at the paper that I posted in the description below, you'll also discover some of the 3D simulations they've created where they sort of show us where all of this gas is located for each of these quasars. With this beautiful simulation showing us exactly what they believe happened early on in the creation of the universe and how all of this gas got dispersed by the supermassive black hole and at the same time how some of it got absorbed by the black hole and how it turned everything so beautiful, so bright and, well, so massive. Now one of the main reasons why it's only now that we're even seeing or hearing about these objects is because our technology and our telescopes have improved so much that we're now capable of seeing past the super bright point of light that's generated by the quasar itself and we can now start seeing the halo around the object, which was very difficult or practically impossible before. With modern technology and modern tools, the scientists can now subtract the total brightness and see around the um, halo in a somewhat similar fashion to how we study the sun by blocking out the actual sun and studying the halo around it. So the modern technology has advanced to the point where we can do this to really, really far away objects, so-called quasars. And the device responsible for helping with these findings is actually part of the European Southern Observatory known as MUSE. MUSE stands for Multi-Unit Spectroscopic Explorer and it's essentially a huge device inside the telescope that allows these scientists to see things very clearly, really far away and in different frequencies. And so by using MUSE they were able to see that this halo provided the perfect food and um, essentially all of the materials for these black holes to grow really really big. And so by using MUSE the scientists were able to see these huge gas halos that were very closely bound to the galaxies providing the perfect food source for these black holes to grow really really large and really massive while also probably providing enough materials for the filaments to form afterwards. And although we're not entirely sure if this completely solves the ultramassive black hole mystery and if it explains the missing baryon problem, but it explains some of it for sure. Seeing galaxies like Mambo 9 and all of these quasars discussed in this study, we're now able to see a much clearer picture that the early universe had these really large, really massive galaxies that I'm gonna try to help you visualize here. So if this is a typical galaxy today, back then the galaxies were probably a lot larger, a lot brighter and had a lot more activity on the inside. And all of this then resulted in what we're seeing around us today. But because it's so difficult for us to see so far into the past and because basically even today technology is still not there yet to see clearly, there is still a lot more for us to discover in the future. Which is why we're going to make sure to talk about all of these mysteries in some of the future videos. On that note, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.